Think Gadget Reviews, News, and All About It. Huawei P10 Hands-On Review Huawei has been steadily improving each version of its flagship P range and the P10 marks the point at which it's truly ready to join the big boys. I spent a bit of time with it at MWC 2017 and from what I've seen there's really very little wrong with it. It has an excellent camera, nice build and plenty of power, plus a few neat tricks too. Here are my early impressions of the phone. Sleek, stylish and colorful. The P10 is a phone with plenty of style but not much flair unless you pick it up in one of the special colors. There are 8 tones in total, of which I saw and handled 3. The most striking by far are the two Pantone efforts, Greenery and Dazzling Blue. Greenery won't be to everyone's taste, but I rather like it. It'll certainly make your phone stand out among the sea of black, silver and gold handsets you'll come across on your commute. Dazzling blue is more subtle but does have the lovely hyper diamond cut finish on the back. Despite being super shiny this magically repels fingerprints. Alright, it's not magic, it's science. But either way it works, fingerprints will be confined to the front of the phone here. The power and volume keys are well placed on the right hand side and don't suffer from any flexing, and there's a USB-C port and headphone socket on the bottom. Oh, and the fingerprint sensor has been moved from the rear, where it's lived on previous Huawei phones, to the front. It's a touchpad rather than a clicky button, as on the HTC 10, and is fast and accurate in use. Twice the camera fun. Two camera phone setups are all the rage these days. The iPhone uses its twin cams to zoom, while LG used the ones on the G5 to do both wide-angle and normal shots. The Huawei P9 and Mate 9, meanwhile, had 120MP monochrome sensor and 112MP color 1, and the P10 revisits that format. While you can use the monochrome cam to take black and white pics, that's not really the point of it. Instead, it supposedly helps the phone focus in low light and improves the clarity and detail of the shots themselves. And, as with the iPhone, it also lets you zoom. Let's start with that feature, because the P10 actually handles it better than the iPhone. Low light photography is also theoretically improved by the P10's two cameras, although here I'll have to reserve judgment until I've had more of a play with the phone. What I can say now is that it snaps onto a target quickly even in the traditionally poor lighting of a phone launch event, helped no doubt also by the laser and phase detection autofocus. Optical image stabilization is also on hand to help keep shots sharp despite slow shutter speeds. That it seems to do well in low light is a bit surprising in one sense, because the P10's cameras have only f2.2 lenses, the bigger P10 Plus gets f1.8 glass, among other enhancements. The other photo feature to mention is the portrait mode. This uses various software tricks to beautify the face of your subject or yourself if you're taking a selfie. I tried it out on myself a few times but it clearly decided it couldn't improve on perfection and didn't seem to make much difference. Again, I'll put it to the test more thoroughly in a full review. Huawei's been steadily improving each version of its flagship P range and the P10 marks the point at which it's truly ready to join the big boys. I spent a bit of time with it at MWC 2017 and from what I've seen there's really very little wrong with it. It has an excellent camera, nice build and plenty of power, plus a few neat tricks too. Here are my early impressions of the phone. Sleek, stylish and colorful. The P10 is a phone with plenty of style but not much flair unless you pick it up in one of the special colors. There are 8 tones in total of which I saw and handled three. The most striking by far are the two Pantone efforts, Greenery and Dazzling Blue. Greenery won't be to everyone's taste, but I rather like it. It'll certainly make your phone stand out among the sea of black, silver and gold handsets you'll come across on your commute. Dazzling Blue is more subtle but does have the lovely hyper diamond cut finish on the back. Despite being super shiny this magically repels fingerprints. Alright, 
it's not magic, it's science. But either way it works, fingerprints will be confined to the front of the phone here. The other finish I handled was the graphite black model and here you're firmly back in standard smartphone country. The photo above shows the black version next to the greenery version of the P10 Plus, and as you can see it gets somewhat overshadowed due to its lack of truly distinguishing features. There's nothing about it which would make somebody clapping eyes on it for the first time say oh, that's the new Huawei, isn't it? That's not to say it's not nice, though, because whatever the color the P10 is, it's a smart and smartly built device. It's about iPhone 7 size despite having a much larger 5.1 in screen than the iPhone's 4.7 in 1, reasonably thin and solid. It's also nice to hold, with shallow curves on the side which help it nestle into the palm. I really like the fact that the camera module is entirely flat with the back of the phone, whereas almost every other handset these days has one that juts out and prevents it sitting neatly on a tabletop. It's the little things in life that matter. The power and volume keys are well placed on the right hand side and don't suffer from any flexing, and there's a USB-C port and headphone socket on the bottom. Oh, and the fingerprint sensor has been moved from the rear, where it's lived on previous Huawei phones, to the front. It's a touchpad rather than a clicky button, as on the HTC 10, and is fast and accurate in use. Twice the camera fun. Two camera phone setups are all the rage these days. The iPhone uses its twin cams to zoom, while LG used the ones on the G5 to do both wide angle and normal shots. The Huawei P9 and Mate 9, meanwhile, had 120MP monochrome sensor and 112MP color one, and the P10 revisits that format. While you can use the monochrome cam to take black and white pics, that's not really the point of it. Instead, it supposedly helps the phone focus in low light and improves the clarity and detail of the shots themselves. And, as with the iPhone, it also lets you zoom. Let's start with that feature, because the P10 actually handles it better than the iPhone. Whereas on the Apple phone you just get a choice of 1x or 2x optical zoom, on the P10 you can zoom at every point between 1x and 2x. To do so you pinch the screen, or move a little slider up and down. It's really easy to do and gives you total control over focal length within that range. It's not optical zoom as on the iPhone, but nor is it your bog standard digital zoom that ends up making every image look like a bag of mushy peas. You can only use it with 12MP images, presumably because the 20MP monochrome sensor is handling some of the zooming duties, filling at detail or whatever. But the result is that whether you zoom to 1.2 or 1.8 or whatever, your 12MP images will have what appears to be identical quality. It's a really neat feature, if not new even for Huawei. Home button Hero X Android's default navigation keys have survived the move from mostly being hardware buttons in the old days to mostly being software buttons now and they've survived the fact that some phones have ditched the recent taps shortcut entirely at times. But they may not survive my favorite of the Huawei P10's software innovations. It's simple, you use the fingerprint sensor to do all three tasks that the nav keys would usually do. A short tap goes back, a long press goes home and a swipe brings up recent taps. No need for software keys taking up space on the screen, and once you've mastered it a far more efficient approach in general. Some people who've tried it hated it straight away, but I love it and already wish my HTC 10 could do the same thing. Screen and speed Outside of the camera and those pretty colored finishes, the Huawei P10 is a fairly solid almost flagship. The P10 Plus definitely gives you a bit more to get excited about with its QHD 5.5 in display and optional 6GB of RAM, but the P10 itself has to make do with a 5.1 in full HD screen and 4GB 